from a flightless simulator at Ferris Air to a momentous meeting in an alley to the complex mind of an architect to every far sector in space and to the brilliance of the central power battery on OA. This is the podcast that covers the adventures of all of your favorite ring slingers. This is the Emerald Echo with your hosts, Adam and the Emerald Enthusiast. Welcome to another episode of the Emerald Echo podcast and vidcast. As always, I'm your host, Adam. And with me is my co-host, the Emerald Enthusiast himself, Donnie. Donnie, how's it going? What's up, Lantern fans? It's the man whose ring runs on fanboy energy. It is the Emerald Enthusiast, and we're back to once again talk about Green Lantern. Indeed we are, and we are back to chronicle the latest issue of the newest Green Lantern title, Green Lantern Issue 2, <laughs> by... Uh, Jeremy Adams, Adams. Uh, mm-hmm. and uh, as lead writer on the main, the main story, and Zermanico uh, on art, and the then pencils, yeah. and then the uh, backup story, which we'll get into, and we'll reveal the creative team when we get there. Uh, but um, before before that, as we always do, we comment on uh, news uh, pertaining to. Green Lantern and, and DC when we have it, and there is some news. So, um, Donnie, um, and first of all, uh, I'd like to point out that as of this recording, it marks the 12th anniversary of the release of the first and so far only live action Green Lantern film. Green Lantern, which starred, of course, Ryan Reynolds um, as Hal Jordan and his now wife, Blake Lively, who was one of my multiple <laughs> wives, uh, as Carol Ferris. Right. Um, so did you have to fight him on that earth for Carol Ferris? Just no, wondering. no, on that earth, he is not, a, he's not, he's, I don't know where he is. He's not okay. All he's right. still playing. He's still playing um, Deadpool. <laughs> oh, uh, the other guy, Hannibal King. Hannibal uh, King. Oh, from Blade. There we go. Yeah, yeah. that's that's how it works. Um, but um, but um, just you know, uh, was that film perfect? No. Was I entertained? And did I enjoy it? Yes. Uh, and so. It was nice to have Green Lantern in a film, uh, in live action for the first time ever. And um, I, I think about it fondly. Uh, just some thoughts from you, Don. You know, you and I have talked about this before. We should really do like a commentary on that, an episode yes, yes, on yes, that. Yes, because exactly. I think that movie did a lot more right than it did wrong. Agreed. Now, there were too many you know, cooks in the kitchen for that. And so there was a lot of like Hollywood nonsense thrown in that kept it from being all it could have been. But there was also a lot that was done correctly. And so I, you know, I definitely wanted a sequel. I still think they should have put a sequel out. I think it would have done better. But we all know what happened, you know, with the box office and the money that was lost there. And unfortunately, that has now led to 12 years of, Almost no Green Lanterns in live action. We got, you know, the Yalan Gurr uh, cameo in Justice League. Of course, we got uh, Issa Penarejo as Jade on Stargirl. But that's pretty much it. Uh, the 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 good news for folks waiting for Green Lantern in live action again is that the Green Lanterns are part of. Uh, James Gunn's upcoming DC uh, Studios, DC Universe reboot. Uh, Just a little bit of rumor on that, if I may interject, uh, Donnie. Uh, Just food for thought again. Let's not take this as as fact. But the word around the buzz that I'm hearing is that uh, comic book scribe 
Tom King, who is part of the DC Studios writing room, mm -hmm. is going to be working on the Lanterns series. Uh, and he kind of threw fuel on that fire the other day by posting a picture of a Green Lantern cup uh, featuring Hal Jordan. And he, and he made some sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, hello there or good morning or some sort of thing, you know, when, they, when, the, when those rumors started popping up online. So he kind of threw some, some, some uh, you know, fuel on the fire, as I said. So, and, you know, uh, if you listen to the last episode on this network of Batman uh, Back to the Batcave, you'll know I've had a sort of a, a new look at Tom King in relates to his Batman work. And so mm -hmm. if, if that ultimately got announced um, that Tom King is the one involved in the show, I would be more than content with, with that announcement. Uh, speaking of while we're on the subject of, of, of DC on film, I did get a chance to see one of Hal Jordan's friends mm -hmm. uh, get his first live action, his first live action film. Yeah. So tell us, what are your thoughts on that, man? In, in the flash, I really enjoyed the film myself. Uh, I, you know, everybody who knows me knows that I was not a a super fan of the choice of Ezra Miller as Barry Allen. Uh, you know, his performance in, in or their performance, excuse me, in Justice League. Uh, didn't, didn't, you know, uh, set my world on fire, but I got to give, uh, them kudos in the sense that this was their best performance as the character. Uh, of course, as well, a I, also th I thought that flash was the worst handled in the DC, the DCU, um, I, I the DCEU. Yeah. And so that. that, that, that's why this movie was necessary. I, I'd agree with that. Uh, the uh, I will say as a Batman fan, they, everybody knows that I am. Right. This was Ben Affleck's best turn as Batman. Well, uh, that's good to hear. Uh, in the brief time that we got him, uh, Michael Keaton returning as Batman was everything I wanted. Uh, no spoilers, but I, there, were, there were points that I that I cried. Uh, oh, cool! Yeah. There are multiversal cameos which made me smile. Um, there were things, there were, there were individuals I never thought I'd see again. Uh, and individuals play certain characters that I never, I never th think I'd see at all. Uh, so I really enjoyed the film. Despite that, its cinema score and box office outlook is not that great. And, you know, that's unfortunate, but I think, you know, watching that film, seeing the discourse around its cinema score and box office has led me to this conclusion. And that conclusion is that James Gunn's reboot of the DC Universe on film cannot come fast enough. Uh, I'm excited for this reboot. I, I think, you know, we may have individual favorite performances and films from that era of the last 10 years but the results speak for themselves and the general audience just isn't vibing with this iteration of the dceu on the whole with the rare exceptions of wonder woman number the first wonder woman and the first aquaman film everything else has you know struggled yeah so, and, and you know the the bottom line is it's that portion that segment of DC cinematic history is over now. Yeah. Even uh, and, and we all that there we all have things I think that we wanted to see, but at some point you just gotta accept reality and say, okay, they're moving on now. What what can I entertain myself with based on what the offerings are going to be in the future? But but I'm excited by by the reboot. I think this is their second chance to build a a shared universe the correct way, you know, with some thought and care as opposed to, you know, just throwing characters into movies and, and you know, throwing crap against the wall and hoping something sticks. Um, so I'm excited. And I'm excited to have on the Green Lantern side of things, 
Green Lantern as a thought from the get-go, as opposed to, hey, let's throw uh, random Green Lantern number four as a, as a cool, <laughs> as a cool, hey, hey, look who it is, and then kill him off. So, you know, it'll be nice to have Green Lantern brought up in a meaningful way. And as James Gunn has said in his big announcement, they are central to exposing the, the big threat of chapter one of the new DCU. So uh, that intrigues me. That possibility intrigues me. And their import, the, the, the emphasis on their importance that James Gunn placed uh, intrigues me. So I, I'm more than ready for a DC on film to be rebooted. But I will still say uh, there is a full review of The Flash coming uh, on this channel. But I will say, see it for yourself. Form your own opinion, regardless of the cinema score regardless of the box office. And if you enjoy it, great. And if you didn't, that's fine too. But see it for yourself. If you're a fan of DC, see it for yourself. Now, in in terms of what can you entertain yourself with Green Lantern while we wait for the TV series? Well, in addition to the current comic we're about to review after the break, there's going to be another comic regarding Green Lantern. So, Donnie, what's the latest word on the next Green Lantern comic? This is going to be called Green Lantern War Journal. John Stewart returns to the front lines in an all-new series from Philip Kennedy Johnson and Montos. Yes. This um, will be available at comic book stores and at participating digital platforms Tuesday, September the 19th. In my opinion, it's, it's just from, from, from the cover imagery... And, and Philip Kennedy Johnson describing you know, wanting to bring some alien and predator kind of sensibilities uh, to this book intrigues me immensely. And after all the amazing work that Philip Kennedy Johnson has done with Action Comics, I cannot wait. I mean, we're already getting a little bit of a preview in the backup feature, but I cannot wait to see what he does with with John in this particular series. Hmm. Thoughts? I am excited, as I always am, with more Green Lantern content. And we're seeing Philip Kennedy Johnson, who, by the way, is a brilliant writer and a wonderful human being, too. We've had him on the show before. Yeah. Um, check out his Twitter. He's a good guy. He says things sometimes that really need to be said. And... Uh, He's incredibly talented, and from what I've seen so far of what he's going to do with Jon Stewart here, I think he got Jon Stewart's voice down, and what is ahead for Jon Stewart should be very entertaining. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. On all fronts, um, uh, I, you know, the minute they told, they announced that Philip Kennedy Johnson was writing a Green Lantern book, I was like, okay, where do I buy it? When does it come out? Um, that was an automatic for me. Um, but that's really all the news we have for you today. So we're going to take a quick uh, break. And uh, on the other side of that break, we're going to review Green Lantern issue two. So stay tuned. We'll right Don't back. go anywhere. What's up, everyone? It's the Emerald Enthusiast. For all of your multiverse viewing and listening needs, check out our shows which include Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, Power Rangers, the Marvel Universe, and the DC Universe, including the Emerald Echo Podcast. You can check us out on Podbean, and remember to subscribe right here on YouTube. That's the Multiverse Musings Podcast Network. From the first podcast to the last. And we're back. And indeed we are, and we have another issue of the latest Green Lantern comic to discuss. So, Bonnie, set the scene for us. Well, we are picking up, this is issue number two, and this is Hal getting his ring back, or a ring back. And let me clarify what happened here. There was some discussion between myself and some of the other Green Lantern podcasters around about what happened with Hal Jordan's ring. Did he form it out of his own will or was it there and it was cloaked, which is what I thought. And I believe it was Chad Bokelman too also thought that. And 
Jeremy Adams, by the way, and bless the guy. He he took the time to say what actually happened, and we actually see that here that Hal was able to manipulate parts of the Manhunter costume to reform that ring mm. from his will. So it was basically he used those materials. We saw that in the last issue, and he used those materials to reform his ring. And this issue opens up with him once again being Green Lantern. Yeah, and and uh, that is really cool of of Jeremy Adams to to, to interact with the fans the way he does. Um, so very Jeremy, very nice of him, and he's like, oh, I, he was like, oh, I must suck because I didn't explain it well enough. And I'm like, he explained it in this and, you know, we're not entitled to every answer. Jer you know? Jeremy, thank you for interacting with the fans the way you do. But now realize that you've opened up yourself to a can of worms because Donnie will now message you with 45,000 different questions at random times of the day. So That's not true. It'll only be 44,000. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. Um, but all right, cool. So So Hal gets his ring back again, and the opening pages is him, again, uh, just enjoying having the ring again, flying around. And then we see that he comes in contact with a group called the Demolition Team. And have you ever heard of the Demolition Team before, Adam? I can't say that I have. Very minor group, and I did remember them, and I went back and checked. It was Green Lantern Volume 2, number 176. Wow. We have seen them there before. If they if they went anywhere else after that, I don't remember it, but I did remember them from that one issue. So that's a pretty deep cut from Jeremy Adams then. Yeah. And I really like the way that Hal is able to round them up. He uses his ring to basically spook them out because they're they're near a or they're in a cemetery. That was so and, cool. <laughs> and he he uses it to make them think that they're like surrounded by these like ghoulish creations and they're all freaked out and great art, by the way, by Zermanico. And oh, the yeah. I think that well. was my favorite page of the, of the whole the, the book when he's creating that construct of the ghouls. Yeah. <laughs> was it what he said? Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was pretty funny, but also just, to double back for a second on what you said earlier, you know, uh, we open with Green with Hal being Green Lantern again. It's so refreshing to see a superhero enjoy being a superhero. Mm -hmm. like, he even that says happens, that, oh, oh, how I've missed the hijinks. Yeah, like whenever that happens, it makes me smile because usually some superheroes are not always happy. Like. Peter Parker will often bring up his dead uncle and the responsibility <laughs> which ensues because of being Spider-Man. Batman is, you know, more often than not, uh, uh, not uh, very jovial, <laughs> if, if I can say so <laughs> myself, which is part of the course for the character. But so it's nice when you see in this case, Green Lantern and a character like Superman who just enjoy helping people and being a superhero. And, you know, I, I like seeing that. So it's cool. Well, speaking of Batman, as Hal Jordan is intimidating the demolition team <laughs> to surrendering, he actually says, you can't outrun your fate. I am vengeance. I am the knight. <laughs> like, I, I, I somewhere did, Batman's ears are itching. <laughs> I did read it in Kevin Conroy's voice, by the way, uh, <laughs> which I assume so was Hal Jordan when he was saying it. So somewhere in the DC universe, Batman the Animated Series is canon. I just want to point yeah. that out. <laughs> there you go. And uh, I'm just imagine Batman's reaction if he knew there were animated series based on him. That would be interesting. I mean, would, would Bruce Wayne sue, you know, mysteriously sue the production company for uh, uh, <laughs> rights and likeness imagery? <laughs> Lucius, so, get on that, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now that happens at 30 days before the actual present storyline. And the story here, you know, it makes clear by saying present day. So 
that actually that sequence ends with Hal's ring cutting out while he's in the sky. Yeah. And then it cuts away from that part of the story. And obviously Hal survived because it picks up with Hal again in present day. And he returns back to his home and he sees, lo and behold, there's Kilowog. Who's just kind of hanging out in sweatpants and a, and a tank top. <laughs> you know, that was so casual and unexpected. But the more I looked at it, I'm like, eh, that works. Yeah. A casual kilowog, I can see it. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, you know what I thought when I saw it? I was like, that would make a great action figure, just a casual kilowog, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm shocked by this revelation, buddy. <laughs> That you would want another action figure? No way. Come on. And I, like I said, I, I really like the way that Germanico drew him here. And uh, he seems, even though he's obviously recognizable as Kilowog, he has like a lot of like very human emotions here. And yeah. uh, you can tell that he and Hal, that there's a, a genuine affection for one another. It's like me and you, Donnie. We, you know, we're like the Hal and Kilowog of the podcast. <laughs> exactly. Oh. I wish, like I, said, I wish I could bench as much as Kilowog, but anyway. So, um, <laughs> what's really funny too is Hal brings Kilowog some Mountain Dew, and Kilowog says, "By the way, this tastes like Andorian puddle water." Yeah, this Dew of the Mountains. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Dew of the Mountains. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Oh man. Uh, now things escalate quickly. Oh, by the way, it's pretty Go funny ahead. how it's pretty funny how. You know, uh, Hal is lamenting about getting and losing his job in quick succession. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, basically the gist of it is kind of saying, you know, suck it up, you know, Boozer, right? And basically. Right. <laughs> exactly. That, suck that, it up, that, Boozer. Yeah, yeah, right? So, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. So, again, things escalate quickly. The next day, Carol is surprised when Hal is boarding the plane when Carol gets on, she she goes to the plane here with her boyfriend slash fiance. That's not really clarified here, by the way. It sounds like they were that they just got engaged. Yeah. Because Nathan's the one who points out fiance. So she got Hal a job in the mailroom, and through a series of events here, it ends up that Hal is on the plane now, helping fly the plane. Yeah. What was your reaction to that? I thought that was hilarious in the sense that he's trying to sort of be ever present in the hopes of winning Carol Ferris's back. And, you know, he makes no bones about it. Eh? The funniest thing to me was when he lock, when uses a contra, construct to lock whatever this boyfriend's name is. Nathan. Yeah, this clown uh, in, 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 in the bathroom. That was funny. I, that I that was fun. It, yeah. it, it was it was kind of <laughs> Hal's being kind of a jerk here, but at the same time, Nathan and boy, I cannot believe he did this. There's an exchange here when Nathan and Hal meet. Hal says, "Well, you know how she gets," and he's like, "Boy, do I!" And the look she gives Nathan, I'm like, "Man, I'm like, you're 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 taking boyfriend tip yeah. from Kyle." I, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something right now. This Nathan individual is not long. Uh, for this world in terms of being paired with Carol Ferris. So just a feeling. <laughs> you know, he seems like a nice enough guy, and they, they do enjoy one another. And like you said, Hal actually uses a construct to lock him in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> and he, you know, it, and again, he is, he's making it clear to, to Carol that he still has feelings for her. Hopefully he won't keep being a jerk about it. Yeah. And we'll get some resolution. But Jeremy Adams has already said that he doesn't exactly know where he's going to take this. As far as the relationship goes. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, It'd be yeah, so uh, like I said, re uh, a really interesting way to look at this here. And like I said, I like that we got a little bit of an answer to who this other person was. Now, we didn't get a lot of background on Nathan here, but at least we know that it's not some big reveal of like a hero or something that's going to cause that kind of drama. Right, yeah. Yeah. And she even says that. She's like, you know, he is a nice guy. Yeah. But, you know, when she says, when, when, when your girl says that to her ex, that's not really a ringing endorsement. Well, you know? yeah. 
what she could be saying, and then th- this is just kind of the vibe I got, is that he's a nice guy and he's more of a normal guy. He's not the hero type who's going to bring chaos into my life the way you did, Hal. Yeah. You know, there's that there. You know, there's safety and consistency there. Yeah. But speaking of, it isn't long before we see the plane end up in the middle of this massive group of like dark, very ghoulish creations of yeah. some sort. And it says continued in Night Terrors, Green Lantern number one, and that's where this story ends. Yeah. So basically, there's going to be a two month long. Uh, horror themed event in DC across so all the regular titles are on pause and there will be special night terror uh, two issue series for the main you know characters mm-hmm. plus a six issue I think it's a no sorry four issue uh, night terror miniseries so mm-hmm. we will cover that uh, yes. of course and uh, and uh, but that's where it ends uh, and then the backup uh, feature do you want how, do you want to rate the two stories separately? I guess we could do that. Yeah. All right. So, with the main story, what, what would you rate it for story and art? Uh, I'm going to give the art a five. I'm going to give the story a four point five. I thought it advanced things very well. And again, they're working. You know, both stories here are working with a limited amount of pages. And then, you know, I feel bad that Jeremy Adams has to like go on hiatus while this other event happens. But I think he's laid a great foundation here. As Philip Kennedy Johnson has, we're getting ready to talk about that. But uh, I really like this issue. And by the way, I'll show you the other covers here in a minute. This is the cover I thought really told the story here because you see Kilowog here, and then you know this Earth is quarantined. So yeah. remember that's why Hal is back on Earth at this point. You know, so right. Uh, for me, thoughts? for me, I'm going to give the story a uh, a. A, a, a solid four. Uh, uh, I, like I said, I really liked the. And that's that's the look that you get when you. That's, sting, that's the sting face. You, 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 <laughs> when you, when you make a joke with a woman's ex boyfriend about her, that's the look you're going to get. You're going to sleep on the couch. <laughs> yes, sir. Indeed, you are. Um, seems like you're talking from experience there, Donnie. Uh, no, I, you know, I'm, I'm a very nice man to my wife. I love her so much. So of course you are. You, we know that. <laughs> and you know how we know that that's true? Because look at everything that's behind them. She, he's, she not only tolerates it; she actually buys things for me. He's here. doing, he's doing something right, folks. Um, so yeah, the story is a four, and the art is an absolute five. I'm, I'm really liking what, yeah, Jeremy Adams is doing. Uh, he, he did wonders for the Flash book. And he's transporting that fantastic uh, storytelling to uh, the Flash, and Zermanico is quickly becoming uh, one of my favorite uh, current artists. So yes, I'm 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 thrilled, I, I, and it's gonna the 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 interlude in between Night Terrors is a little bit of a bummer because I feel like we're just getting rolling. But mm-hmm. such is the nature of the beast. But that that also has potential. So yeah, we will cover that. And I, I'm interested to read that. I just wish that we had a little bit more time for this story to Wouldn't pick it up. Would make sense to Steam. do that in October, Donnie? Or just uh, yeah, around uh, Halloween. A holiday themed event. I mean, come on. Yeah. Me, I don't know. Just a thought. Timing, but what do I know? The timing seems very weird. I will what give you I? that. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not a, mar- a marketing expert. Just common sense. But we're gonna read it. So what's the big deal? All right, the backup story. All right, the backup story here, and this is entitled Rise of the Revenant Queen Part 2. Um, I just like, you know, I need to point this out here. I just like the the lettering on that here, the title. I just mm-hmm. think that looks really cool. Yes. Um, again, I really like the art here. And this kind of picks up. It's an interesting exchange between John and his mom. And... John's like, I told you I'm done with the core. Here with you is where I want to be. And she's not buying it. She's like, you know, I know you too well. I know the situation too well. And we're seeing, obviously, things unfold. And it says another time, another universe. We're seeing things unfold with the Revenant Queen here. Obviously, John's going to be drawn into this. So what were your impressions, sir? 
Well, in terms of the conversation between John and his mother, it's not that I don't doubt that John wants to be there with his family. Like, I, I, I legitimately believe him when he says that. Mm-hmm. But the pull to your former life, you know, in, in service, in, in this case, to the Green Lantern Corps, it's always going to be gnawing at you. You know what I mean? It's it's mm-hmm. the... It, it, it almost reminded me, me uh, like his wanting, his, his looking into the sky and uh, longing, wanting to, you know, seemingly be up there. It reminds me of a, of a, of a pro wrestler who retires but still wish, you know, still says, oh, I wish I could get back in the ring. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or one more match or whatever. It, it's right. that kind of vibe <laughs> that, that, that I get. And yes, I have to. And I just find it interesting that, you know, um it's it, funny that you said i've got to tell you so I've, I've, finish your thought and then i've yeah. got to tell you something. It, it's funny that that in the other part of the story says uh, another time another universe so it's kind of uh, further clarifying a little bit what we saw before and we were questioning about last issue we are dealing with an alternate timeline in universe and at the end of that we see john stewart arrive in a big splash page mm-hmm. and he's got the 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 lantern armor that he had from that is similar to um uh jeffrey yeah, the, thorne's run yeah and the, yeah the emerald knight yeah yeah mm-hmm. so i'm i'm curious to see where that's going to go again <laughs> poor timing to have an interlude for for, for a dc wide event yeah because <laughs> it makes the cliffhanger even longer instead of instead of one month it's now and look, look at it my way. It gives us time to collect variant covers. That that is a good. So. Uh, now let's ask your wallet if it agrees with that line of thinking, <laughs> buddy. Why, you know? So, so I did. In, in addition to these, are the three other variant covers I got here. In okay, now I have. I still have to. I'm, I, I gotta. Get, my comic shop has all three of those. I really like this Killawa. I really like that he's in the the sweatsuit here. Yeah, the like windbreaker and stuff. I'm like, you know what? I would look. I think I would look good in that if I could oh, find you'd one. Rock, you'd rock that for sure. I, w- I would rock that, and I'd like. I get my wife to like sew a Green Lantern uh, logo onto it. You know, go for it. I would. I say do it. Oh, so yeah. of those three, of those two, uh, the other two, Donnie, which do you think? Not the Kilowog one in the sweats, but the other mm-hmm. two. If you were me, which one would you get? Because I'm torn on which one to buy. You know, they are very similar, in I think they're both really awesome. I. If you're just going to get one, I like this because it has all the action in the background. Yeah. You know, you see the the ships and everything. There's explosions and stuff. And so, there yeah, might, if you're just going to get one, get that one. It's Michael Bay level explosions, you know, <laughs> as I like to call it. Um, <laughs> but like I said, I like the I just I like the A cover because again, I think it's the most. I like, do like that cover. Symbolic cool. of what's going yeah, on. So it's cool. It is cool. I, uh, I haven't. I'm going to be deciding today which one I pick up. So I'm not. I'm not but it's funny that you talked about a wrestler like retiring. What we see in this story is that the the guy that we wondered, the young Lantern, okay, yeah. he turns out to be Lantern Shepherd. That's who that's he identifies yeah. himself as Lantern Shepherd. And he's fighting the Revenant Queen. He's no match for her. Well, of course. And then John Stewart arrives. And it's funny that you talked about wrestling because I thought about when he did that, I immediately thought, I thought about Sting and Darby Allen. Yeah. Because it was like, you know, like he, you know, th- this, this young lantern who's doing his best, he's overmatched. And then the legend comes to help him out. And like I said, I just thought about Sting and Darby it's Allen. It's like, oh, I see, I thought of it. It's like, remember that time at WrestleMania when Papa Shango and Sid Justice had. Hogan tied in the ropes so they were being on it. <laughs> and then all comes the ultimate warrior. Yeah. That's what I that's kind of what I thought. <laughs> These are the thoughts that go uh, through our head, ladies and gentlemen, when we're reading comics. Uh, I, 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 I just listened to uh, one of the Monster Maniac promos the other day between uh, Randy Savage and the Ultimate Warrior giving a, a joint promo, and it was awesome and borderline nonsensical, but it was awesome. <laughs> well, usually when you get an uh, Ultimate Warrior uh, promo, who the hell knows what he's saying? I don't think he knew what he was saying, Donnie. Uh, but that, that's just neither here nor there. So for the backup story, um, man, it was really, really brief. 
It, it was, but I, I got to point out a couple things that I really like here. Number one, the Revenant Queen is horrifying in the way she looks. And, of course, like I said, I like characters like that. Yeah. She's very intimidating. Oh, she, it was, know, yeah, yeah, beautifully drawn in a horrific kind of way. Yeah. yeah. And I just love that shot of John Stewart arriving in his armor. Like, that looks so badass. I loved it. Um, but, so... And once again, I, I really like this new oath that Philip Kennedy Johnson has written here right. yeah, for Lantern Shepherd. I am the lantern in the dark, the torch that batters back the night. Let evil cower in the light of all who wear the lantern's mark. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, so despite it being really short, I'm going to give it a four. Uh, um, and what I love about it is the interaction. And speaking of scary, there's Ezra Miller. Sorry. <laughs> Look, he won't be he won't be the Flash for uh, any longer after this movie. I can I can guarantee you, but that's neither here nor there. Um, please, James Gunn, save us from this not all this nonsense. Um, uh, but um, although we're not, once again, we're not telling people not to go see the movie. No, you know. I, 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 I just finished saying twenty minutes ago that I liked it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you know, it's just I, I, I need it. I need a fresh coat of paint on the DC universe. Like I, I need it desperately on film. Anyway, the comics are fantastic. Um, but so uh, four for the story for this for this particular I I backup issue uh, and. I'm gonna get four point five for both. No, no, I'm gonna for, give the for, art a five and the the writing a four point five. For, for the art gets a five and yeah, my my only issue really with the writing there is it's just, it's there's not enough story. It's too short, exactly. Which yeah. is not Philip Kennedy Johnson's fault. It's it's so. not. But my but my favorite part was the interaction between John and his mother. Mm -hmm. uh, any interaction between a mother and and, and her son, it kind of pulls at, at the heartstrings for me because I have such a close uh, bond with my mother. So. Uh, By the way, the, the, that last podcast when she bought you that peanut butter milkshake, I had to go in and I didn't have ice cream, but I found a way to like use some protein powder to make myself a peanut butter milkshake. That was a really good yeah. peanut butter milkshake, man. <laughs> she did. You, I saw that and you were just like, mm, it's so good. And I'm like, man, now I want one. So I, yeah, I just used peanut butter and some protein powder. And let me go see after the show if I can butter her up to make me another one. We'll see what <laughs> I'm going to give her a call and say, hey, you got any more? <laughs> um, but I digress. But um, so yeah, it's it's a four and a five for my ranking. Um, great stuff. It's a great time to be a Lantern fan. Uh, and uh, uh, in terms of where the comics are, and uh, more goodness to come. But that brings this show to a close. Uh, if you want to talk more uh, Green Lantern with us, you can. Uh, on social media. Donnie, where they track you down? You can find me on Twitter and TikTok as the Emerald Enthusiast. Let's talk comics. Let's talk collectibles. Let's talk Green Lantern. Also, my my particular YouTube channel that's that's entitled Emerald Enthusiast. You'll see lots of reviews like the ones you see behind me here of collectibles like this. Awesome. If uh, you want to be... In contact with me, you can at Adam underscore Leaves fan. Uh, you can also follow the show on social media at MMNPDC on Twitter. We have a Facebook group, which is in the description below. Click that. I will add you. And we can continue the conversation there. But until next time, remember that Green Lantern will be, a, or Hal Jordan specifically, will be a jerk to uh, projected suitors for Carol Ferris's affection forever. From the first <laughs> issue to the last. So long, everybody. So long, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>